Welcome to Get Cooking in Cloud, where we share the best recipes to apply in your cloud kitchen. I am Priyanka Vergadia, and in this episode... <gasps> oh my God, that was some serious earthquake. Gosh, disasters like this can be pretty hard to deal with when you have a huge online presence. So let's see the recipe to plan for a disaster like that. When things like this, this, or this happen, you need to make sure the impact on your business is minimal. And for that, you need a robust disaster recovery plan. A disaster typically means a service interrupting event. So what is disaster recovery or DR? Well, it's the amount of impact a business can take during a disaster. We use two key metrics to define the impact. RTO, or recovery time objective, which is the maximum amount of time your application can be offline. This usually depends on SLAs you offer to your customers. An SLA is a promise made by you as a service provider to your customers about the availability of your service and the ramifications of failing to deliver the agreed upon level of service. RPO or recovery point objective is the maximum amount of time during which the data might be lost during an interruption. Typically, smaller RTO and RPO values mean that the application must recover quickly from an interruption. How quickly a system can recover after a disaster is defined by high availability and disaster recovery patterns, also known as HA and DR patterns. Let's consider this scenario. I'm making some cakes and cookies for a party which requires a mixer. I'm on my first batch of cookies and the mixer starts to make some weird noises. The manual says that the mixer will fail with such a noise. So I need to do something to carry on with the party preparations. Hmm, what do I do now? I can call the mixer company to come fix it, which is obviously going to take time and won't really work best given the party is today. Or maybe I can try to fix it myself based on the instructions in the manual. Well, this will mean a small pause in my preparation, but hmm, will bring me back on track a little bit quicker than waiting for the mixer repair guy. Huh, what else can I do? Well, I could also keep going at a slow mix option with where, you know, I can't really hear that warning noise. In which case I have to slow down, but the mixer still working so I can continue on and get it fixed later. This option would definitely have less impact on my party preparations, at least for today. So let's review our options in the DR terminology now. If we call the mixer company for a fix, we have to stop making the cake till they turn up and fix it. It will be slow and time consuming, but eventually we'll be back working. So this scenario is closest to what we could call a cold DR pattern. If we try and fix it ourselves, it's a bit faster than the cold pattern, but since we still need to pause making our cake in order to fix the situation, it is still slower than normal. So this scenario is closest to what we would call a warm DR pattern. And the option where we continue working at slow speed and decide to fix later is the most efficient as I'm still making cakes without stopping or pausing and is closest to what we would call a hot DR pattern. Well, moral of the story, we pick a DR pattern that makes sense for the business at hand. In this case, it was really serious business of hosting a party and look how amazing this cake turned out. If you use Google Cloud for DR, it can greatly reduce the costs that are associated with achieving both RTO and RPO values as compared to fulfilling those requirements on premise. For example, traditional DR planning requires you to account for a number of requirements, including capacity, security, network infrastructure, support, and bandwidth. Google Cloud has several features that help bypass most of these complicated factors and reduces the cost of managing a DR solution. Global network, redundancy, scalability, security, and compliance are a few such factors. Keep following the series for more on this.
Now let's see what are some of the best practices for planning a DR strategy that can apply to our business. First and foremost, we want to define our RTO and our PO values because they would indicate an appropriate DR pattern. Then we make sure that we have a full end-to-end -end recovery plan. Just backing up and archiving data won't be enough. Make our tasks as specific as possible so when the time comes to execute the plan, it does not just say, run the restore script. Well, from where? What's the command? Such information should be there in the instructions. Implement control measures, monitor and send alerts when something destructive happens, like spikes in traffic or deletion in data. Prepare the software, verify that you can install the software from the source or from a pre-configured image. Make sure you have the appropriate licenses for that deployment. Our continuous deployment toolset is an integral part of our application deployment. Make sure it's available at the time of disaster to recover the environment. We should not forget about security and compliance. Configure security the same for DR and production environments. And last but most important step, make sure your DR plan works. Maintain multiple paths for data recovery and test it regularly. That's all for today on Get Cooking in Cloud. Whether you're struck by lightning or an earthquake, hopefully you've learned some tips to recover. Join us next time because we will share the recipe to implement DR in cloud for your applications hosted on premise. If you would like to see more such content, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.